cold. It's windy. The whales are right there, but just too far out. Just praying they come closer. Just want to get this photo and go home. My name is Andrew Budziak, and I am an urban wildlife photographer. Cities across Canada are home to some remarkable animals that we don't often know are even there. So in this series, I'm traveling coast to coast using photography to tell the stories of some awesome urban wildlife. Each stop along the way has its own unique assignment, challenges, and adventures. So grab your camera. Things are about to get wild. When you're on the East Coast, things just happen. The guy who drove us from the airport heard what we were doing and said, hey, head up to uh, Signal Hill. There were some foxes up there. I thought, oh, hell yeah. So that's where we're going. I know I'm supposed to be thinking about whales, but I'm not gonna turn down the opportunity to find foxes with an urban background. And it didn't take long for one to show up. This is so disappointing. At this beautiful location, this incredible and unique animal shows up. And there it is with the hamburger patty in its mouth. This is really bad news for that fox and its family. There are a bunch of them up here. I'm gonna do something about those patties. Been here not 10 minutes and watched that fox make off with three of these things, so I'm getting rid of the rest of them. This wasn't a new problem. There were signs everywhere. Feeding wild animals human food ruins their systems, makes them way too comfortable with people and their cars, and leads to scenes like this. When animals no longer fear humans, confrontations can get dangerous. Is that your boy? He's gonna get bit. He's, he's gonna get bit, yeah. That was way too close. The crew and I pulled back. We decided to take in the scenery and wait for the crowds to disperse. The view was stunning, and I think the foxes agreed. There was a shot I wanted, but I wanted to get it safely. This silver, or melanistic fox, isn't super rare but it is incredible. I just had a remarkable interaction with foxes in Montreal, but I wanted to capture an image that shows the life these particularly famous foxes should be living, wild and free of human food. So I waited until I was one of the last people on the hill and picked my moment. What a beautiful end to an ugly first day in St. John's. Newfoundland and Labrador has been a huge blank spot on my map of Canada. Like most of you, I've never been here. And now that I am here, I absolutely love it. Unfortunately, I needed to get to work. I needed a photo of a whale. And luckily, there are a number of online groups where locals post sightings of whales. And last night, someone posted that Signal Hill, the place where I got that fox photo, had been super active with whales. This is gonna be very good. I was feeling lucky. So it was time to go. I'd make my way to Signal Hill, camp out, and wait for the whales to come to me. This could take hours, but for the largest family of mammals in the world, I'd wait. Slow and steady was the order of the day. Unsurprisingly, nature had other plans. I'm keeping one eye on the stairs, one eye on the water. 
I was coming down here and a woman stopped me and said that there were two minkies spotted about 500 meters off the shore here, sprinting down these god-awful steps. These are some pretty urban whales. They're selfishly sprinted ahead of the camera team. The last little bit. <sighs> What was that? What was that? Unfortunately, it looked like the whales had moved on. Once I was able to speak properly again, <sighs> I realized this was a great spot to show off just how close these whales come to the city. This is, there's the city right there. That's the city. That's like whales, city. Now I just need to see a whale. And at exactly that moment, a coastal cliche decided to make my job really hard. I think this flock is gonna have me beat. It's rolling in by the minute, it's absolutely beautiful, but it's covering the area that I'm trying to scan and watch for whales. Breach, breach, breach. I heard one. I heard a second in the fog. Damn it. The fog is just covering it. There's a breach there, and then you could hear the spout just in the thickness of that fog. There's no way I could shoot through that. This is so frustrating. Again, I could hear them. <sighs> okay, the fog's clearing a little bit. It's like that fog followed the whales in, and then the second they moved on, like, it parted. And just like that, the fog swept back in. And this time, it wasn't going anywhere. This fog is too thick to see anything. It's game over right now. That was my chance. As frustrating as it is, being defeated by the weather is just part of life on the rock. Another part of life on the rock? Heading to the Kitty Vitty Harbor, which makes up Eastern St. John's, and stopping by the 300-year-old Mallard Cottage. This national treasure is a restaurant, bar, and hotel. If I ever go missing, and it happens to be a Sunday, you'll likely find me right here, in front of a great meal, listening to some wonderful music. Traditional musicians in Newfoundland, especially those with deep histories here, are some of this country's best storytellers and communicators. And that is certainly true of Andrew Dale and Dwayne Andrews, who grabbed a cocktail on an exceptionally rare sunny day. Great set. It was a blast. Thanks for, thanks for having us out, too. Thanks for being ahead. I wanted to chat with these guys to get a sense of how music and the imagery of Wales plays an almost outsized role in the culture of this island. Playing at like the bank or or the hospital, like, everywhere you go, there's live music. Oh, I, think, I think I got the answer already. Early we were talking about uh, sunshine and how, you know, really we don't have a lot of it. But there might be an inverse proportion to uh, <laughs> sunlight and music. So uh, music may be our, our sunlight. Uh, you know, and harsh weather, man, like, like the reality is, when you know when you're making your living off, off the land and off, off the sea, weather matters, right? And you find yourself having to like spend time indoors and also entertain yourself indoors. Then suddenly you find yourself, you know, like telling a lot of stories and like singing a lot of songs and like playing a lot of playing a lot of music and whatnot, right? But you know, you will notice perhaps on all the tourist tourism commercials, you know, you'll see the, the clothes on the line. It's like. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, 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 isn't, it isn't always that vibrant That's here, right. in terms of the sunshine at least. But a lot I think of tourism the, ads were shot on that one sunny day. That exactly, yeah. Just a light breeze, they're like, perfect, boy, shoot all the commercials now. On the theme of, of the ocean, I mean, it seems to permeate everything. What role does like the you know, whale play? I think not like not just in the imagination, but in but in people's lives. We've always looked at whales as just being these kind of like these almost like magical sort of otherworldly creatures. You know that, that we that we've 
kind of always been completely fascinated by. You, know. you can get all sort of analytical about it, but there's definitely something, even just the gracefulness at the speed that they move and oh, like the size the of them, they go up and come down. Why do they even breach? What does it mean? They're not going up mm -hmm. to breathe, because when they breathe, they just kind of put the air hole over and they go back down. But when they go do the big breach and the tail comes That's up, right, yeah. and you know, the conclusion there is that it's joy. They do it because it's fun. I think there's something felt, you know, mm -hmm. when humans see whales breach, it's just mm -hmm. an expression of joy, really, you know, there's something to that. That conversation got me fired up about seeing whales, and I had a really good chance later that day. I was scheduled to head out on the water on a chartered boat, but before I departed, I got a disappointing call. We had a charter lined up to do a whale tour. There was a captain that knew what we were looking for, and he had a spot all picked out. I was pretty damn confident that we were gonna get our photo there. But he's got mechanical problems with his boat, so it's off. This is a crazy busy time of year, and the odds of finding another charter before our flight weren't good. Plus, everything was booked up in town, so extending our stay would be a nightmare. That night, I went to bed, hoping in the morning some luck might arrive. And it did, extremely early. Guys, whales, Kyle, our production assistant, just sent me a message. We gotta go, saying that he's found a captain. We got whales, buddy. And the captain has just spotted whales. So we are scrambling to get ready and get out the door. Scramble a little harder to get on the boat and get photos. Here's Kyle, our PA. Okay. Hey, buddy. Um, the, uh, the conditions have changed. The winds have changed. They're coming southerly with gusts up to 60 kilometers an hour. Put it's that into context <laughs> for me in a boat like that. Yeah, it's not safe to go out. That is the worst possible news. I headed down to the water anyway. The captain that was supposed to take us out had spent his life on the sea and knew as much about whales as any tenured marine biologist. Too fucking bad, I would have loved that. That would have been great because we would have got some real good stuff today, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Captain Leo Hearn just knew bad. why I was in Newfoundland and wanted like, to tell me about the, the changes he's week. seen in his life the on the water. Up. So they're, they're moving what's going on the abundance of food is getting weaker or scarce, we, we call it scarce, right? So the cabling, the herring are, are, are not like they used to be. They're, they're being overfished, like everything. Capelin and herring are two kinds of fish that show up in and around the waters of St. John's. Whales follow these fish to feed, and tourists follow the whales. In Newfoundland and Labrador, tourism accounts for spending of over a billion dollars annually. And St. John's is at the heart of that. For a short period, whales come to the mouth of the city and become urban wildlife. Hotels, restaurants, and bars depend on the busy summer months when tourists flock to see the whales. Large industrial international fishing is removing fish from the water at an unsustainable rate. The collapse of the cod industry is well documented, and capelin numbers are about 6% of what they were in the early 90s. And the whales are noticing. They're changing their hunting habits to make up for the drop in food. If numbers continue to drop, this could be a disaster for the whales who have come to these shores for millions of years. Yeah, you went to Cape Running out of options, I asked Captain Leo for advice. His suggestion? Head as east as you can go. So me and the team drove east, right to Cape Spear, the most easterly piece of land in North America. Its northern shore faces the St. John's Harbor. In these waters, whales are truly urban wildlife. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Straight ahead. <sighs> Seeing spout, 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 but just so far off. Even with the big lens like this, it's nothing more than a speck, even zoomed in. See the spray, see a bit of their backs. That's it. It's 
freezing cold. It's windy. Been away from home for weeks and weeks and weeks. Just, just want to get this photo and go home. Predictions for wind aren't great. It's only supposed to get windier and windier tonight, which means no possibility of heading out on a boat. Oh, holy shit. I was thrilled with this photo of a humpback's fluke and thought maybe that was it. But I was wrong. One of the greatest shows in the natural world was just getting started. trip on. This is the Wales Playground, it's their feeding ground, and it's right at the doorstep of St. John's. What a place to end. Being cold, tired, and wet was a small price to pay for the opportunity to tell this story. These humpback whales are perhaps the boldest reminder that our cities and the space surrounding them are home to incredible animals that need our consideration and protection. Now that I had my shot, it was time to pose for a quick team photo, pack my camera, and head home for one more adventure.